if you ask me my first brush with sunk happened during the year 2000 i was the joint director in the revenue intelligence the dri in bangalore and we had an information that the government scheme yeah. is being misutilized by somebody the scheme of the government was allow somebody to import gold and this gold can be manufactured into jewelry with some value addition and the equal quantity need to be exported so duty free import is allowed but as you know there are smarter fellows who would like to tweak with what the government's intention is government's intention was to create lot of jobs to the poor artisanal because we have a very good artisanal base and we will be getting a lot of foreign exchange too so what the gentleman was doing he will import gold sell half the thing in the market put half the gold and put something else and then export it we had the information and normally the gold is supposed to go by hand of pilot it can't be put in a in the baggage or something like that because it can't be allowed so he was supposed to take it to a lufthansa flight we intercepted on the 1st of january of that year when there and found that he declared 74 kilograms of gold we opened the tin it contained 64 kilograms of gold and 8 kilograms of paper newspaper so he was a big gentleman and watch page is government was ruling the country at that time and he and the mind you we arrested him in the dead of the night took him to the judge there was nobody to bail him out at that time in the dead of the night around after 1231 but the honorable magistrate on his guarantee he allowed the bail which is unheard of in any judicial system it's a different issue that he got dismissed after that that is a different issue but immediately he could save himself and the fellow was threatening us with left right and center that he is knows everybody in the government so nobody will be able to help you people out my officers got scared so i had no other way luckily there was an officer who has got some link with the sunk he told sir we will just go and talk to the biggest man who is in charge of the karnataka when the he is a very elderly person very dignified person and he heard us we told him sir this is what is happening this gentleman is doing something against the country so you have the only hope that we have then we would like to meet the sarsan chalak for that one because he is the only person who can talk to the government and get something done in our favor so he said okay wait for a week then he called okay you people can go to delhi and meet sarsan chalak ji on that kesav kunj so the first time we are going we are also not knowing the place when the so we went sarsan ji so the vamat the friendship the way he received us no that is something unheard of i mean say and he had he made us to have food also with him because we had to sit on the ground with pans and other things it becomes difficult for me but then we have to survive with that one and it is something like you know it's something like a son he treats you you feel at such a dignified people at the people at such high level how they treat others you know that shows the thing so he made us sit there and then we had to eat the food and then we had to clean the plates and everything also after that one at that time we can see we have only seen him before that one i had not seen mr jetley after that i have met him personally that's a different thing because he was our minister mr basari rai sindhi a lot of ministers coming and giving namaste and then going and sitting along with the whole thing so we are seeing more ministers coming so when he told us to i mean when you are taking leave he said okay nothing to worry nothing will happen to you people and exactly the same thing happened and lately in 2017 when our mohan bhai ji came to delhi for the vijayadashmi address he called a few of the bureaucrats that's the first time i am meeting him he treated us so warmly you know you feel that okay there are people who demand respect and there are people who command respect it is the people who command respect that survives because that will give the message to the people that okay look how good they are because as we all know it is a fruit it is a branch which has the fruits that will only be hanging low the fruit the branch doesn't have any fruit that will be always showing in that pride and everything it is that humility that simpleness the way he treats you that makes you feel i mean something like i mean this un unheard of thing so i should thank bhavidhi also for that warm reception that you have given me in delhi okay now i think everybody was mentioning that okay this lecture series is for an organization which is almost going to complete 100 years without any split now if you look at it see a lot of dynasties would have come lot of organizations would have come and if you ask me which is the longest standing dynasty in the world because it's very difficult every dynasty you can see three generations four generation somebody will be overthrown new generations will come new dynasty will come and all things 
It is a Japanese dynasty of Emata. The chrysanthemum throne that we call. It has got an unbroken tradition almost from 6 BC when the Jimbu was the original person who is supposed to have started. And now from Akikito to Narikito, that's the last emperor that's who is reigning now. They have got an unbroken tradition. But when you look into it, why they were able to do this? Because in every dynasty, if you are buying for power, as the old saying goes, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. So if you are looking for the power, there is a problem. But after the Tokugawa revolution and even before that also, the Japanese emperors have lost their power as a person who administers. But they are the persons who control the moral authority and supports the people. And that power, that moral authority is what brings them apart, sets them apart from all the other dynasties and that is why they were able to continue this. And even in the Second World War, when the suicide bombers of the Japanese army or the Japanese Air Force were working, they were all doing it only for the king not for the generals. That was a trust. That was the way the general population was looking at the king. Because moral authority transcends every other authority. And if you have moral authority, then you will be able to survive. And another thing I would like to say, maybe, as in our culture, we all believe in that old Rigvedic Suktam. Ano Badraha Kadvo Yantu Vishyapta Let all noble thoughts come to me from all over the world. When you get noble thoughts and you are willing to receive that, that is the most important thing. Noble thoughts always goes around here and there. When we invite the noble thoughts to us, as a culture, we are supposed to become noble. Because when you invite noble things, you, are nobility. you also get noble thoughts. And when you have a thoughts, noble thoughts, you will always do noble deeds. The culture will continue. So any organization which has a root in the Indian culture should also transcend times and it should go forward. And with these few words, let me thank the audience of the function once again and wish you all the best. Jai Hind. Dr. John Joseph, sir.